panels, Kent Hovind here and the crew at Dinosaur Adventureland in Lenox, Alabama. I did a debate this afternoon at 3.30 with uh, Aiden. That's posted on our channel uh, about cosmic evolution. I couldn't believe some of the stuff he said. Then I did a show on Standing for Truth at 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock. So I'm tired. I'm going to take a few questions and quit for the night. So we believe the Bible is true and evolution is dumb, real dumb. Didn't happen. There's no evidence at all for evolution. I couldn't believe Aiden said the stars are not getting further away. The distance between them is increasing. Why? He said, if you put two dots on a balloon that are an inch apart, and then you blow up the balloon, the dots stay in the same position. No, they don't. They get further apart. They certainly get further from the middle. He said, no, they're, they're, they're just the distance between them. The space is expanding. I said, man, I'm going to use that next time I get pulled over for a speeding ticket. Officer, I wasn't even moving. The space between me and the house was increasing, but I wasn't even moving, officer. You can't give me a ticket. See how far, see if that works. You want to try it, Billy? Try that, try that next time we get stopped for something. Okay, questions and comments. So please send a few in. I'm going to cover John chapter 15 tomorrow night. I think you're all going to want to see this one. I'd like all the staff to be here. We're going to be short. John 15, a very powerful point that needs to be made. Okay, what do you got there, brother? Okay. I can't read it. Just read it to me. I watch your DVDs. This is the young kid. Uh, one man, while we were discussing Bible verses, Sunday claims that one translator of the Bible made up the last chapter of Revelation. So you ever heard this and have any info on it? And, uh, okay. In case they can't hear this, can they hear you speaking? Okay. You're saying one, this, somebody wrote in and said somebody told him that one of the translators of the King James added the last chapter of Revelation. First of all, there were 56 translators. It was a committee, and no, not one person is going to add anything without everybody else knowing about it and approving it. So, no, that's not true. He's making up a story. Baloney. Do you believe there were pyramids on Mars? I don't know. I, I think what we see on Mars is just simply mountain ranges. I don't think it's possible for it to be a, a man-made object, okay? Life not possible up there on Mars. Not any life that we know. Okay. There. Hello. I can that I can answer quickly. Hi. I'm beat. We're closed on Monday. But how many people showed up? Gave tours today. And how many tours did you give at a science center? One tour with two families. Okay. I got. I loaded them all in my Jeep. It was crowded. They loved it though. We went through the real tour through the mud. Oh man, they loved it. Okay, so, but I'm tired. Okay, any other questions? Okay, hi again. Third time tonight, Ken. Very uh, well done against Aiden tonight. Well, thank you. Appreciate that. I don't know how to help these people. I do these debates hoping to help them, but knowing I probably won't. But it helps a lot of the people that listen. Because every, every one of you is probably facing somebody in your neighborhood, maybe in your family, who believes this dumb evolution religion. And maybe I can help give you some ammunition to get them out of that, to change their mind. Bobby, how many letters do we get in the office from people who got saved or got their mind changed by watching our videos or something? Hundreds and hundreds. Get our video series, 18 hours, 50 bucks, called the Creation Seminar Series. Uh, 50, you can watch it, return it, get your money back, okay? We cover on video number one, the age of the earth, how to prove the earth is not billions of years old. Video two, the Garden of Eden, why did they live to be 900 years old? I mean, if you look at the dates in the Bible, got a chart here somewhere about that. I thought I did. The Bible says clearly that before the flood came, the people lived to be 900 years old. Is it back there, up here? Huh. What's it doing over there? No, not that. Yeah. Oh, somebody taped it up? How am I supposed to reach way over there? Anyway, why did they live to be 900? And reptiles never stopped growing. So before the flood came, the reptiles would be huge. That's where we get into part three, dinosaurs in the Bible. They're mentioned in the Bible. They're mentioned all through history. They've always lived with man. They did not live millions of years ago. Video four is all about lies in the textbooks. They're using 50, 40 or 50 some lies to make your kids believe in evolution. Then number five, the dangers of evolution. This theory is not only stupid, it's dangerous. You can buy the DVDs one at a time, which is going to cost you 70 bucks, or get them all together for 50 bucks. Video six, the Hovind theory. Where did the water for the flood come from? Where did it go? What did it do? So video seven is actually two DVDs on dinosaur, I mean on question, commonly asked questions. You get the whole series, 50 bucks. 
It would be a good present to give your atheist friends. Say, please, we'll give you 20 bucks if you watch this. So they say, nah, we'll give you 500. If that don't work, try 10,000. At some point, they'll agree, and then go back and renegotiate the price. Okay? All right. Uh, CSS International Edition. Dr. Oven Times 27 award-winning creation seminar series with subtitles in foreign language. Oh, okay. Genesis Baptist Church, how do you convince someone that we no longer have to keep the Sabbath? Well, it's a fair question. I've covered this numerous times on my uh, series, on video number seven of my seminar series I just mentioned. I talk about that. What about the Sabbath day? Here's my short answer to the question, okay? Where's Sabbath? Right here, okay? If you want to get all my slides, like 50,000 of PowerPoint slides, you get them on a thumb drive for 100 bucks. And you just touch it and go. What about the Sabbath? Okay. Sabbath is the seventh day of the week. Okay, I'll pass up, skip up to all this. God finished his work, he ended the work, and he rested on the seventh day. Not because he was tired, he was done. I was out mowing the church grass one Sunday afternoon years ago. This guy stopped his car, walked over to the lawnmower, I shut it off. He said, I'll never come to your church. I said, and why not? He said, you're working on the Sabbath. I said, well, sir, first of all, the Sabbath was yesterday. Secondly, God rested because he was done. I'm not done. And the Sabbath is for the Jews. Very clear. God rested because he was done. 2,600 years later, God gave the Ten Commandments to Moses and said, remember the Sabbath. So for 2,600 years, it isn't mentioned at all. Okay? God told Moses to command the children of Israel to honor the Sabbath. A lot of churches think they honor the Sabbath. I've never met anybody who keeps the Sabbath. Nobody. Nobody listening to me keeps the Sabbath. You may think you do. You probably keep part of it. Parts, but they don't keep it all. Nobody does. Okay, many people worship and churches meet today on Saturday and think the Bible commands this. All the days of our week are named after pagan gods. Sunday, Moon Day, Thor's Day, uh, Woden's Day, Wednesday. They're all pagan names. Okay, and we don't know that our Sunday and is the first day of the week. It's the first day of our calendar. There's no way to know that. We, we do not know if a Roman pagan calendar we are using is the same as the original creation week. Our Tuesday could be the seventh day. You can't know those things. It's not worth it. I don't want to fight over it. Do whatever you want to do. I'm, yeah, that's the question. I'm telling you what I would say, okay? Does God require Sabbath keeping? There's a lot of good websites about this, okay? The law was a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ, but we're no longer under a schoolmaster. Hmm. The law was given to bring people to Christ, but does not keep us in Christ, okay? It doesn't save you. In book of Nehemiah, we see, Thou camest down upon Mount Sinai, that would be Moses, leading him across the desert, 2,600 years after the creation. And thou madest known unto them thy holy Sabbaths. Wait, wait, wait. He made known the Sabbath on Mount Sinai 2,500 years after the creation. You mean nobody knew when it was? Correct. God rested on the seventh day, never mentioned again. The first mention of the Sabbath is 2,600 years later when God told Moses, tell the Jews to keep the Sabbath. Now, the Gentiles will keep the Sabbath in the, on the, in the millennium, okay? So there's no evidence or scripture of anyone keeping the Sabbath for 25 or 2,600 years till it was made known to Moses. Then we see in Exodus, see that God hath given you the Sabbath, abide every man in his place. Don't go out of your house. Well, hold it. One of the Sabbath rules is you can't go out of your house. How on earth can you have a Seventh-day Adventist church? Aren't they all getting out of their house to go to church together in a building? They're breaking the Sabbath thinking they're keeping the Sabbath. No traveling on the Sabbath. They don't go out of your house. Okay. If you really want to keep the Sabbath, you couldn't go out of your house. That's why I say I've never met anybody who keeps it, okay? The Sabbath day's journey, I say, you can't work and you can't make anybody else work. Hmm. You can't go out to eat. You can't use any utilities. You can't use, use water. If you're on city water, electricity, you can't use any of that. <coughs> you're making somebody work downtown. So if you, they, what happens, brother? They keep a few parts of the Sabbath and they think they're spiritual and you're not. That's what it's really a holier than thou problem, is what it is, okay? Can't make anyone else work. And if they, they rested the Sabbath seventh day and hallowed it, anyone who defiles the Sabbath shall be put to death. Uh, do you do that? If you see your neighbor out mowing the grass, do you shoot him? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so breaking the Sabbath was the death penalty. Kindle no fire. Oh, that means you can't have hot water, can't charge your car, internal combustion engine. You can't use a water heater, you can't cook anything. You really want to keep the Sabbath? Okay. Don't light a fire, no cooking, don't start any internal combustion engine. Okay. Children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath. 
It's a sign between me and you. God said so clearly. I'm not Jewish. I'm Norwegian. If you want to try to keep it, fine. But I'm telling you, you won't be able to, okay? Children of Israel keep the Sabbath. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath. It's a sign between me and the children of Israel forever, okay? So, oh. so son of man, speak to the elders of Israel. I gave them my Sabbaths. They shall be a sign between me and you. I don't think it could be more clear. The Sabbath is for the Jews, the children of Israel. So anyway, that's my answer, short answer to the long question, or long answer to the short question. Okay, get video seven for more on that. Okay, let's see. Do angels have free will? Tough question. It looks like, at my current understanding, I've only been studying the Bible 55 years, so I may not have this correct, but I think the angels were given one opportunity, choose Lucifer or God. And it appears like a third of them chose Lucifer. But even that number comes from something in the future, when a third of the angels follow Lucifer in the future. So I asked somebody else that question. Okay. It looks like they had one choice, make a choice, get in or get out, and some chose to follow Lucifer. And they're going to be cast into hell forever. But no, I don't think, uh, uh, do angels say, I don't think they have free will anymore. They've already decided. That would be my best, best answer to that. But I'm willing to change with, given the evidence. Okay. That's a question. Do you ever heard of Chuck Missler? I, I knew Chuck Missler well. He's a good friend of mine. I've preached on his program several times, okay? God created us inside a digital simulator based on the universe not being infinitely large, large or small. I didn't get too, too much in on that topic with Chuck Missler, okay? He was a great guy, did a great job for the Lord, and I would highly recommend his ministry, but I, that I couldn't answer that question. Dr. Hoven, uh, hey, Hoven, I appreciate your ministry questions. These crazy flat earthers, what do you say to these that say the Bible says four corners of the earth? How do you answer that crazy? It's, a, it's, a, it's, an, um, it's like saying I'm hungry as a horse. It's an idiom. Are you hungry as a horse, literally? Uh, I, I'm so hungry I could eat a, eat, a, eat a whole cow or something. We have all kinds of expressions that we make. The four corners of the earth, I think, is referring to the four points of the compass, north, north south, east, west. How do you get north and south and east and west with the flat earth? How do you ever get darkness? I heard one of them say, well, the earth is flat and the sun's going around like this and it just gets so far away we can't see it. That is just plain stupid, okay? It's going over the horizon. Actually, the sun is standing still. We're the ones turning. But we're turning and the sun, we're going out of the view of the sun. If the earth were flat, I could get on my roof and see Tokyo with a good telescope. It's round. Don't, don't get, I'm not going to waste time on that. It's real dumb. Just like there's only two genders, okay? I'm not going to get into that dumb argument of all the different genders. If you think there's more than one gender of cow, come try to milk our bull. I'll pay you five bucks. Okay? All right, let's go home. I'm tired, brother. All right, uh, See you tomorrow for John chapter 15. I think you're going to like this one. 7 o'clock, 7.15.